Elon Musk's ambitious vision for the next generation Starship spacecraft is one of rapid reusability. Launch it, bring back the rocket booster, refurbish it, quickly launch another Starship. And recently, he revealed a new landing trick, an odd method of landing a Starship and its super heavy booster. What exactly is it? And how will it work? And why will SpaceX do it this way? Join us today to get a closer look. Part of that vision involves a pretty wild piece of engineering, a launch and catch tower. Today, most of SpaceX's operations rely on the Falcon 9, a flight-tested rocket that can launch more than 30,000 pounds of cargo to low Earth orbit and then land safely for reuse. This capability has made SpaceX the world's largest satellite operator in just a few short years as it's begun deploying its Starlink internet satellites. Launching satellites and resupplying the International Space Station is only the start though. With Starship, SpaceX could reach the Moon, Mars, and even more distant locales. First, it has to be able to take off to maintain the low cost of the Falcon 9 and then land in one piece afterward. That's where Mechazilla comes in. The tower currently soars at 469 feet or 143 meters above the landscape of Boca Chica, Texas, and it's been proven to work well when successfully lifting Starship S-20 onto Booster 4 in both full-stack executions on February 9th and March 15th thanks to its arms. With it fully stacked, the shiny American broomstick has become the tallest and most powerful rocket ever made. While it's already set to be an impressive visual sight, Mechazilla is making the scene look even more majestic than ever. But now, let's get back to the new landing trick developed by Elon Musk and the SpaceX team. Unlike Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, which use hydraulics after separation to push themselves into the right position for re-entry with their legs, Starship and Super Heavy Booster will be captured using the Mechazilla Tower's arms. Now, some may think that SpaceX and Elon Musk's innovations have exceeded expectations within the bounds of current technology. But, in fact, the SpaceX chief hinted at a plan in a series of tweets on the last day of 2020. In a Twitter video, a user demonstrated renders of the expected landing of a super heavy rocket booster that lands with legs. However, Elon Musk corrected the video by saying that it would try to catch the rocket instead of making it land on its own. Moreover, it would utilize its grid fins that are already set for the rocket booster to take the load of the descending spacecraft. Right! It was the idea of catching starships and super heavy boosters out of the sky as an alternative to having the several dozen ton steel rockets use basic legs to land on the ground. This would be a major departure from SpaceX's highly successful Falcon family, which lands on a relatively complex set of deployable legs that can be retracted after most landings. The flexible, lightweight structures have mostly been reliable and easily reusable, but Falcon boosters occasionally have rough landings, which can use up disposable shock absorbers or even damage the legs and make boosters hard to safely recover and slower to reuse. Therefore, the removal of the landing legs for the Super Heavy is essential. The current SpaceX workhorse rocket, the Falcon 9, used to launch satellites and missions to the International Space Station, returning to Earth and landing using retractable landing legs. For Super Heavy, Musk sees advantages in eliminating said legs. Saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mounts, ready to refly in under an hour, he tweeted. The move redirects the stress of a landing onto the grid fins, which are located near the top of the boosters and are essentially used to steer the rocket during flight and onto some sort of apparatus on the launch tower that the grid fins will come to rest on. Musk said using legs to land super heavy is still an option as well. Legs would certainly work, but the best part is no part. The best step is no step. So how will Mechazilla go about catching things? Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization, Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burn SpaceX routinely uses on Falcon. In the Super Heavy catch, Musk shared, the booster actually appears to be landing just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's Mechazilla arms instead of a concrete pad on the ground. Aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion, the arms appear motionless during the catch, making it more of a landing. Look closely. 
That's right, Mechazilla doesn't move much at all. The booster does the work and is precise enough to hit the target spot. In theory, the chopsticks wouldn't have to move much up or down at all during the catch. It's not a crazy, agile robotic arm moving along with the booster's path. The Orbital Launch Integration Tower, or Mechazilla, is enormous. The chopsticks alone likely weigh around 100 tons each. Now, jumping back into our booster catch simulation directly from Elon's development team, let's take another look at the very last part of the catch. Super Heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly throughout the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. That slow, cautious descent and even slower touchdown may be necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be to land on a pair of hard points with inches of lateral margin for error, maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. With such a slow descent and final hover, it means that the super heavy landing shown would likely cost significantly more Delta V, or propellant, than a Falcon-style suicide burn. Propellant has mass, so super heavy would likely need to burn at least 5 to 10 tons more to carefully land on arms that aren't actively matching the booster's position and velocity. Why? Why do you have to land it this way, Elon? The reason can only be reuse and reuse quickly. If the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position onto the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever. The fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from the previous flight to reflight is 27 days. But Musk said that he wanted Starship to be able to fly three times per day. If Musk wants to build a city on Mars by 2050, he might come to depend on that rapid turnaround time. He estimated that the city would require around 1 million tons of cargo to reach self-sufficient status. If each ship carries 100 tons, that means SpaceX will need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years, or around 333 per annum. Well, this landing method will revolutionize the industry and will save SpaceX a lot of millions. <laughs> the Starship prototype launches have been both successful and explosive so the launch tower might also face some tense moments. As Musk tweeted last year, success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. As Musk said, SpaceX could attempt to catch a super heavy booster out of mid-air with a tower-sized Mechazilla robot as early as Starship's second orbital launch attempt. But SpaceX is still waiting to see if the Federal Aviation Administration will issue a launch license for an orbital Starship to take off from Texas. There promises to be a lot of interesting things that happen after that test flight, and I can't wait to see how the tower tries to catch a rocket booster. And that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss out on future episodes of Alpha Tech. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.